All right, in this video, we will be talking about the rhizosphere. So the rhizosphere is a very small area that exists between the root and the soil. And um, it's interesting because it's such a small area, but it's incredibly important because that's where the plant is interacting with the soil. And um, that interaction can be very different than sort of the bulk soil conditions. Um, but from plant management, it's also the most important. So activity in the rhizosphere affects the above ground plant growth significantly. And like I said, the root exudates are altering pH, um, trying to find other food sources, trying to make elements available to the plant. And then this creates a really specialized area where other uh, microbes are interacting with the soil and the plants as well such as uh, nematodes feeding on roots or mycorrhizal feeding. And this is where that symbiotic relationship forms between um, bacteria and fungi and plant roots. So root exudates released alter the pH as well as the chemical composition. Uh, and then this is mostly done in efforts of the plant to take in nutrients uh, but then there's this interaction with microorganisms, so this is where we get our root nodules and our legumes and um, the ectomycorrhizae and endomycorrhizae. So ectomycorrhizae uh, colonate just on the outside of the root and form that symbiosis. Endomycorrhizae will actually penetrate into the plant root and um, they interact that way. Uh, a lot of the rhizosphere research, as with many other things, has been done on agricultural crops just due to sort of the history of soil interest as well as funding for research. Um, some research has been done on forests, but even less of that has been done on urban forests. And so it's suspected that 50 to 80 percent of net photosynthate goes to below ground processes. So again, we have our above, above ground portion of the tree whose job is to perform photosynthesis, but then at least half, if not three quarters of that, is sent down to below ground processes for the root growth and um, energy for roots to take in other essential elements that the tree can't make on its own. And um, so then obviously a healthy rhizosphere is really important for a healthy soil. Biological soil activity is greatest within two millimeters of fine roots, like I said. Uh, it's a very small, thin horizon, but if we think of the total surface area of our plant roots, um, then it can increase sort of exponentially. Uh, the biological activity is not the same across the bulk of the soil, and those root exudates, exudates uh, stimulate biological growth, and so that interaction happens in this thin horizon here. Uh, stimulated organisms produce compounds that maybe protect the plant, um, others could be harmful to the plant, uh, and so we want to ideally have the beneficial um, microbes in place. Uh, some of our tree issues can come from harmful uh, microbes, and so then that requires some, some management intervention. The rhizosphere, because it's so specialized and there's a lot of nutrient exchange there, uh, it's also very competitive, uh, but organisms there are adapted to these very specific, very different conditions and produce chemicals, uh, most often protecting roots from parasites and pathogens. Again, a beneficial relationship. Um, some of this symbiosis leads to nitrogen fixation. Uh, some leads to mycorrhizae interactions, and then mycorrhizal, mycorrhizae form associations with specific plant species. So the bacteria or fungi are often specific to those plants. Uh, plants depend, expend exorbitant amounts of resources creating the rhizosphere. So again, that 50 to 80 percent of the photosynthate pr products going below ground, but in exchange, that is where they get their water, their nutrients, uh, fine root growth, and then some protection from um, the bad players in the soil. 
humus. So what is humus? Uh, it's the end product of decomposition. So when we talk about organic matter, humus is our recalcitrant carbon. Um, it's very stable, breaks down slowly, comprise somewhat of labile, um, more recalcitrant when we get to the state of humus. So labile carbon is more easily broken down. Often that is consumed, uh, like I said, in that three to five year range. And then the recalcitrant, recalcitrant carbon takes much longer for it to break down. But it has a very high surface area, um, even higher than most clays, a very high CEC or cation exchange capacity, and water holding capacity. So very good at storing nutrients and water in the rooting zone. Um, unique properties that improve soil, so it protects clay from being wetted. It attaches to particles and improves soil structure, uh, decreases the density of the soil so that we can have more roots and micro and macro fauna activity, gives the soil its dark color in some places where soil is exposed, this can help it warm up quicker in spring, um, and that also decreases erosion 